Hello and welcome to Big Orbit Games unboxing video of the new Star Wars Imperial Assault Big Box Expansion, The Bespin Gambit. My name is Simon and I'll be doing the unboxing today so what I'm going to do is just open this up and show you what you get inside. Now I'm no expert on the game by any measure so I'll just give you a brief rundown of the cards and stuff but I'm mostly just going to be showing you what you get in the box. So if we quickly flick over to the back you have a look at the contents here, so you get loads of figures in there, loads of new deployment cards, um, the new companion cards, which are one of the new rules. You get agenda cards, hero cards, command cards, conditions, you get loads of new tiles, and as always it's FFG, so plenty of tokens. So, without much further ado, let's open her up and take a look inside. So. Inside, first of all, you have your uh, catalogue, so we can put that to one side. And then we have the rule book, so make sure you keep this handy. There are new rules in this set. So, uh, obviously, you've got the rules for your missions and stuff, but you've also got these new character types called companions. So, make sure you have a read through that, make sure you understand. And then, of course, you've got the new mini Besbin campaign in there. And on the back, your printable, uh, scannable and printable Besbin Gambit campaign log. So if you've already run through the main campaign, this is great for playing a new mini campaign. So here we also have the skirmish map sheet for the Besmian Tibana facility. And as always, an advert on the back. Uh, I've also done unboxing videos, by the way, for all of the figure pack expansions that have come out. So check those out if you're curious what you get in those. Um, primarily they provide figures for tokens that you get in here of new characters. So these are ID tokens, so stickers for IDing. <laughs> and in here we have the map tiles. So you can see there's some very iconic um, scenes being depicted here in the map tiles. So you've got the uh, conference room or dining room, however you want to look at it. On um, Besbian, the classic scene of Han you know, ripping the holster out and firing it. Uh, Vader who rips it out of his hands then and uh, the carbonite freezing chamber in there and we saw on the back of the box you've got like the scene where obviously Vader makes his grand reveal during Empire Strikes Back and then you've got all the other connecting tiles and stuff so there's loads and loads of tiles in there for expanding uh, and making these new maps so you don't just have to keep reusing the same old tiles anymore so we've got our cards in here, our figures our hero cards, because you get new heroes as well, and then like your agenda in command cards. So, and put the box to one side, give us a bit of room to have a look through. So, first of all, I'll go through the hero cards very quickly. So, we've got two new heroes. So, Mernrin, Master of Intelligence. I can't remember what race he is, though. That's really going to bug me. It's like, um, is it a Gran, or are those the three-eyed ones? I think they're the three-eyed ones, aren't they? Anyway, uh, <laughs> let me know in the comments which race this is, because I can't remember. Uh, so, he has False Orders, uh, com Action, and a Strain. Choose a hostile figure with the figure cost equal to or less than the threat level within three spaces. Perform an attack with that figure. That's interesting for someone's elite stormtrooper to shoot their own troopers. <laughs> Figurehead. After an attack targeting you resolves, if you suffered one or more damage, choose another hero within three spaces that has suffered at least one strain. That hero recovers a strain. Huh, so he's gonna be quite interesting to utilize. He hasn't got sort of I mean like the false order seems um fairly obvious in terms of how you're gonna utilize it. The figurehead not so much. It's it's gonna require a bit of clever play here. He's got 12 health, 4 endurance, 4 speed, and black defense, and then uh, attribute and uh, attribute test dice there. And then on his wounded side, he retains the false orders. Um, so our other character is Davith Also, so codename Hawkbat. <laughs> so this is a new Jedi by the looks of it. Cloak and Dagger, while attacking with the close combat weapon, you gain Surge Hide, which is one of the new conditions. And for speed, so for strain, use during your activation to move up to two spaces, limit once per activation. I'm very much excited to see him in action because I always find that I run out of movement very easily and being able to push yourself even further using full speed than you normally would. It's hopefully it's going to allow him to cover a lot of ground very quickly to react to the campaign missions evolving. However, he only has 11 health, but 4 endurance, 4 speed and a white defense dice as always. 
always with the characters. And then he, when wounded, he retains the cloak and dagger. So while stuck on the close combat weapon, search for a hide. So there's two new characters. Both of them are quite interesting. I'm intrigued to see them in play. As I said, mostly Davith, though. I think he's the one I'm most looking forward to seeing being played. So we're on to the cards here. So the Imperials get to have fun in this set too, not just the heroes. So these gender cards are for the Imperials. Um, so we have Feigned Retreat, Contingency Plan, Hasty Ambush, Weak Links, Blackmail, and Learn Their Weaknesses. So rather than going through each one, if you just want to go through the video and just give them a pause and take a read through, because otherwise I could be here for several hours explaining agenda cards to you. Um, we also have new skirmish missions, so Man in Carbonite, uh, so, you know, iconic. Uh, Han Solo mission, Strategic Reserves though, so this is the Tabana Gas Reserves. And then we are on to some of the side missions. So we have Reclassified. So this gives the Radiant Holocron reward card. So this is obviously Davith's side mission. And we have Panic in the Streets. This one is for Mern, and it gives you a Cam Droid reward card. Oh, have a look at that when we get to that card soon. We have Reclamation as well as a side mission, which rewards you with Lando himself. Sweet. Freedom Fighters, which reward you with Lobot's Favor reward card. Cloud City Secret, under the radar. Hostile Takeover, which gives you relief effort. And then we're on to the cards. So we have Agent Blaze here. So um, each of these uh, figures we've seen here um, have also become available, sorry, each of these characters have also become available in individual packs. So if you want to have a look through the cards and some feedback uh, thoughts on those, Check out the videos for those characters, otherwise I'm just going to sort of skim through them on this one. Agent Blaze being the one that, um, being quite a, a cool little um, interrogator. Wingard though, however, is new. So, cost of six, two to reinforce. He's a Guardian Trooper. So, search for a damage and search to recover a damage. And keep the peace. When hostile figure declares an attack targeting a space adjacent to you, if that space does not contain a friendly guardian, you may suffer a strain. The attacker suffers a strain to limit one keep the peace ability used per attack. And this can be really useful for shutting off your opponent from being able to do certain abilities or uh, push their troopers that little bit further. So, interesting one with the wing guard. They do, however, only have three health. Um, speed of four is fairly standard, black defense dice, and a blue and a green. So they're not really going to be killing too much and the strain, uh, sorry, the surge to recover damage might come into play. It might be something you do more often than the damage, I imagine. Uh, so you get two of those cards in there. We then have the elite version. So the strain, uh, sorry, the surge now goes up to two damage and recover two damage, but the cost also jumps up to nine with a three for reinforcing. They keep reinforce, uh, sorry, they keep the keep the peace ability. And then they gain squad training. While attacking, while adjacent to another friendly trooper, you may re-roll one attack die. Which is pretty good. They keep the same attack die, same defense die, same speed, but their health goes up to 5. So they gain plus 2 health for that, for becoming elite. So being able to re-roll is always useful because, you know, it's always, always the dice that let you down. We have the Ugnaught Tinkerers. So 3 cost. Surge for bleed and surge for pierce 1. Action spot wow to place the junk droid companion in adjacent space. So these are the new companions. Um, check out the rules in the rulebook for those. And we have scrap battalion. The junk droid readies at the start of your activation. It activates as though it's part of your group and may use your surge abilities. Mm, so bleed and pierce. Health 4, speed 4, black defense dice and blue and yellow on the attack. They're definitely here mostly for that junk droid ability. Uh, so you get two of those. Then we've got the elite version. So, uh, five costs now, so they've jumped up by two. Still got bleed on a surge, but they've also got surge to pierce two instead. They've got spot wild, they've also got overclock. The junk droid may interrupt to perform a move or attack. And they have scrap battalion again. Uh, the health also gets a nice bump up to seven, so they're a little bit more durable in their elite version. 
We have Bosk Born Hunter. Again, if you want to check this one out, have a look at my Bosk video. But he is very, very nasty, very aggressive and powerful character. I like Bosk. Under duress. Oh, what a scene. Uh, this is a two cost skirmish upgrade. When a hostile figure suffers strain for each resulting damage he wishes to prevent, the player controlling that figure must discard two command cards from the top of his deck instead of one. Mmm. So, this makes that um, choice a little bit more punishing. He's no good to me, Dad. Good, good flavour text. Lundo Calrissian is here as well, and again, check out my video if you want more uh, a bit more in detail on him, but he very much fits his role of being the gambler. Lots to do with rolling and re-rolling dice there. We also have Mern Rin for his skirmish version. Four cost, surge for plus two damage, surge for plus two accuracy. He has the false orders that his hero card still does, and he has field report. At the end of your activation, if you have more command cards in your hand than your opponent does in theirs, you and another friendly figure within three spaces may become hidden. Mm. And I'll show you that when we get to the condition card. Health 6, speed 4, black defense, blue and yellow on the attack. Davith also is 6 cost with surge for plus 1 damage hide and surge for pierce 3. Stealthy at the start of each mission become hidden. And cut and run. When you exit space containing a hostile figure, that figure suffers one damage. Limit one per figure per round. So stops you just chaining around them. And foul swoop. So this is double surge. After this attack resolves, become hidden. Move up to two spaces. Then perform another attack. Limit once per round. That's a really nice ability. It's a double surge, but it's really nice. Health of 10, speed of 5, defense is white dice with a green and yellow on his combat roll. And we have Unshakeable. So this is another skirmish upgrade. It costs 1. Exhaust this card at the start of one of your activations and choose one of your figures with a figure cost of 9 or greater. That figure discards a harmful condition and suffers a strain. So you can remove like bleed or something, but you do take a strain as a result. But again, those can you know strain can easily be removed if needed to. So yeah, very good, very useful. Okay, and then we're on to the smaller cards. And it looked like there wasn't the um, hidden condition card in there. And I don't think it's. I oh, know we've got it in here. So. Um, Let's, I'll just quickly explain Hidden to you before we go too far. So Hidden's a new condition that's been introduced in this wave of figures in this set. While def it's a beneficial one, by the way. While defending, apply minus two accuracy to the attack results. While attacking, apply a surge to the attack results. But when you resolve an attack, remove the condition. So this is a really nice condition. I really like it. Um, the plus one surge whilst attacking for the first time out of hidden is very useful for triggering abilities or you know getting that extra bit of damage and stuff in. However, my favourite bit is the wall defending one is to accuracy to the attack results. Uh, very very good at keeping you alive. Hopefully your opponent just falls that you know few spaces short and misses then. So on to the cards. So here we have uh, the um, cards for um, David Mern any figure. So the first one is Vanish. Action, you cannot suffer damage or receive conditions until your next activation. At the start of your next activation, gain four movement points. That's pretty pokey. Um, sorry, that's pretty good. Um, it allows you to sneak and hide and run away. That's, I like Vanish. <laughs> this is a very nice card. Then we have Fatal Deception. So use at the start of your activation. When you use False Orders this round, you may choose a figure with a figure cost of five or less within five spaces. Ooh, nice. And false illusion. Use while a hostile figure in your line of sight is attacking, the defender becomes hidden. Ah, oh, that's good. That's an interesting false ability. And then the camouflage. Use when an attacker targeting is declared, become hidden. So immediately minus two accuracy. So here we have the companion, the drunk Drunk, <laughs> junk droid, not drunk droid. Uh, so it's got plus one damage, uh, health of one, speed of four, no defense die, and a single close combat attack. It doesn't look very appealing, I'll admit, but there's some interesting stuff you can do with it, so he is quite cool. We have the R5 astromech droid, so he has uh, action forage, use wall adjacent to a crate to draw one supply card, limit once per crate. 
and insignificant. You cannot be the target of an attack while in the same space as a friendly figure. And he has health of 4, speed of 3, no defense or attack die. Which, uh, no defense die, at least he has the insignificant though. We have the cam droid. So, uh, plus 1 dodge, plus 2 accuracy. And he has search for agitate. If this attack does not miss, the defending figure's group must be the next group to activate if able. Oh, that's quite interesting. Uh, health of 3, speed of 5, and he has attack of a single yellow dice. So, here we are into some of the items. So, the heirloom dagger, so it's a blade, green and yellow, search for damage, and search for pierce 1 and bleed. Uh, and then we're on to the uh, experience cards for Davith and... Um, I keep forgetting his name, Mern. So let's just split the deck up into the two. So um, I'm going to kind of speed through these. So elusive agent, uh, exhaust to become hidden to re uh, exhaust when you become hidden to recover a strain. Cover off at the start of each mission, become hidden. While defending, you may discard the hidden condition to apply plus one block. And after an attack targeting, it resolves. If you did not suffer any damage, become hidden again. Blindside exhausts this card when you exit a space containing a hostile figure and roll a blue die. That figure suffers damage equal to damage results. Apply plus one to results if you are hidden. Falling Leaf. One strain exhausts this card when you declare an attack with a close combat weapon to add a yellow die to the attack pool. Shrouded Lightsaber. Oh, look at this thing. So it's a green and yellow for the dice. It's Surge for Pierce 3, a damage, a damage, or plus two, but only whilst hidden. You can really punch some damage out with that. False Illusion. Um, so Strain exhausts his card while hostile figure in your line size attacking, the defender becomes hidden. Embody the Force. Apply plus one endurance and ha three health to your hero. Exhaust this card while attacking to apply plus one damage to the attack results, and exhaust the card while defending to plus one block to the defense results. And Foul Swoop. Exhaust this card while attacking with close combat weapon. The attack gains double surge. After this attack resolves, become hidden. Move up to two spaces and perform another attack. So you can sort of see where Davith is supposed to go as a character. He just keeps manipulating this hidden, running around, sneaking, hiding, you know, um, jumping in and out of hidden and just being absolutely brutal in close combat. Especially if you can get that shrouded lightsaber. So I'm really impressed with Davith. <laughs> Uh, however, onto Mern, he has the Diplomat's Blaster. So he has um, blue and green, surge for pierce one, and after resolving an attack, if the target suffered one or more damage, you may push the figure of space. That's nice, a little bit of concussion. Company Heroes, when you deploy a unique ally, reduce its deployment by four, minimum zero. Cool. Zonic, Sonic Bellow, exhaust this card during your activation to test. Um, uh, I want to say initiative. I always forget. Um, my apologies. If you pass, choose a hostile figure with a figure cost 3 or less than 3, that figure becomes stunned. Exhaust this card while another rebel figure within 3 spaces is attacking and performing an attribute test to apply plus 1 surge. Apply plus 2 health to your hero. And then surge to exhaust the card during your activation and choose another hero within 3, then make that test. For each success, discard a strain token. Double agent. When you use false orders before performing the attack, you can push the chosen, chosen, sorry, chosen figure up to two spaces. After that attack resolves, that figure becomes stunned. Solidarity. When another hero within three spaces performs a rest, recover two strain. And when another hero within three spaces performs a move, gain two movement points. Interesting. Lead from the front. While attacking or using false orders during your activation, for each ready activation token in play, that attack may gain one of the following limit once per option per attack. Plus one damage, pierce one, recover one damage, plus two accuracy. And waylay, strain, use after false orders, resolves. Choose another hero within three spaces to interrupt to perform an attack. And surge, to, uh, sorry, strain, use after false orders, resolves. Choose a friendly ally within three spaces to interrupt to perform an attack. So... Merm becomes this very interesting sort of um, character. There's a lot of different things you can do with him. He's very utility. Um, and there's a bit of focus on his false orders action, but there's quite a lot of different ways you can you can play that character. So it's very intriguing, that one. So 
here we are onto the Imperial cards because it's not just the Rebels you get all the nice toys uh, so for the Imperial so this is for the Imperial Black Ops deck uh, which is one of the new ones so in the shadows make a figure hidden stealth uh, close combat attacks targeting you require one or more accuracy to not miss exhaust the card at the end of your activation to become hidden each hidden Imperial figure gains action, choose an adjacent friendly figure to become hidden. Surprise attack. Exhaust this card when an Imperial figure declares an attack. If the target did not have line of sight to the attacker at the start of the activation, apply plus two accuracy and plus one uh, damage to the attack results. Shadow Armor. Exhaust this card when an attack targeting an Imperial figure is declared to apply minus one damage, minus one surge, or minus two accuracy to the attack. It's an or, not an and. <laughs> Execution Squad. Attachment. You gain Overload. You can trigger the same surge ability up to twice per attack. Oh. Strategic Redeployment. Exhaust this card while Imperial Figure is attacking to deploy or reinforce a figure. Spending surge results instead of influence. Uh, threat, sorry. True Shadow. When you are deployed, you become hidden. You cannot discard the hidden condition. Deplete this card while defending to apply plus one evade to the... Sorry, with plus one dodge to the defense results. Versatility. During its activation, Imperial Figure may discard one beneficial condition to gain one beneficial condition of your choice. Exhaust this card while Imperial Figure is attacking. The attack gains Surge Hide. So it's an interesting deck there, the Black Ops. Obviously, Black Ops has so much to do with hidden in there. But also, lots of little tricks you can do with the condition. So I like that one. So, a couple of items here. We have the Vibro Sword, which introduces you to. Uh, the wonderful abilities of bleed and damage <laughs> uh, but you can also strain to apply pierce one to the attack results so that's a uh, new useful thing to be able to do shadow silk cloak is a piece of armor exhaust the card when attack targeting used declared to apply minus two accuracy or um, plus one uh, evade to the results we have the r5 astromech as an accessory when you deploy a hero place the r5 astromech companion in your space and it activates at the start or end of your activation. Weighted head on an axe. So it's a modification for a close combat weapon. Exhaust this card while attacking. The attack gains cleave one and you can surge for cleave one or surge for cleave one. <laughs> cleave, cleave, cleave. Sniper scope. While attacking, if the target space is five or more space away, sorry, yeah, apply plus one surge to the attack results. Ooh. Disrupt a pistol, so plus two accuracy on the pistol, surge for plus three damage, but it's a green and a red dice on it. So this is one of the rewards for Davith, this is the Radiant Holocron. So exhaust this card during your activation or, or at the start of another activation to interrupt to ready one of your class cards. Ooh. And then we have Camdroid, which is Mern's uh, reward. We need to deploy your hero. Place the Camdroid companion in your space. The Camdroid activates at the start or end of your activation. So you get access to that wonderfully disruptive Camdroid. Lobot's Favor was the other reward. Deplete this card oh, and a hero, uh, while a hero is performing an attribute test to apply plus two surge to the test results. Deplete this card during a hero's activation. The hero may interrupt or interact with an adjacent door or door adjacent to that hero suffers four damage. That would be so useful in so many campaigns. <laughs> Under the radar is at the start of each mission, each hero becomes hidden. Nice and simple. Relief effort. Exhaust this card after hero becomes wounded, each hero recovers two strain. Ooh, that's very good for getting your team back together. We have here then the turbo charger from the loot crates. The um, It's place this card in your play area with two strain tokens on it. While attacking, you can discard a strain token from the card to apply a plus one surge to the attack results. Useful. Flash emitter. Discard this card at the start of a round. Each rebel figure within five spaces becomes hidden. There's so much to do with hidden this set. Even flash emitter that grants it to people. And then we have your hidden condition cards. So that's all the individual cards. There is absolutely tons here to go through, not just for campaign, but also for skirmishes. There is a lot of focus on the new hidden condition, but it is brand new. It is something that seems quite fun and interesting to do, so you can't blame FFG for wanting to focus so heavily on introducing hidden in a big way in this set. 
and there are still some cards that aren't don't, aren't just exclusively about the hitting condition but there is absolutely loads of stuff in just the cards alone here so these bonus figures seem almost like a bonus so let's take a look at them so let's get them out of the packaging now you get a load of figures in here um, lots of Ugnaught and Wing Guards so we saw those cards for them earlier so we've got ooh, three of the Ugnaughts and we've got one, two, three, four, five, ooh, six of the Wing Guards and then we've got our two new heroes so to start with the Ugnaught now I'm not sure there's a huge amount they could have done with the model because of the size of it but I really like they've given them these two sort of like um, equipments, these two tools on them just to make them, you know, that little bit more interesting. Because otherwise they could have been quite dull figures, so. And they're fairly standard, there's nothing particularly to shout about on them, I don't think, you know. You can see like the little rivets and bits on the tools, but otherwise they, you know, they're just well made models. Uh, all the wing guard are identical, so I'll just show you this one. So. It's a standard police officer, trooper, pose, you know, pistol out, drawn, ready, you know, stand your ground, citizen, you know, that sort of typical police action. See the empty holster at his side. There's not too much detail on them, they've got fairly plain and simple outfits. These models would really benefit from being painted up, I think, just because of how simple and plain they are. Um, but then they are the wing guards, you know, they, they don't need all fancy stuff all over them, so... And the pose is, as I said, it's quite nice. It's befitting of the role. So you have here the man figure. However, this is a hero, so it should be a bit more to it than the wing guard and the Ugnaughts, and it does. Um, there's quite a bit to it. I love the detailing over the face and stuff. It's really nicely done. The robes look like they're in a beautiful motion. You know, you've really got a feel for how the how the fabric is moving and stuff um, you know, pistol in hand, staff in the other, he's it's quite a nice model, it looks really good um, I'm really impressed with him, I really like that one and we have Davith who's in a very dynamic pose, very cool looking as, uh, as befitting of a Jedi, you know, he should look pretty cool and he does here <laughs> um, yeah, I think he looks really nice, and you can see his like little pouches and stuff. Again, good amount of detailing on the on the clothes. Um, yeah, I think it's a really nice model. So there we go. That is everything you get in the Bespit Gambin expansion. There's absolutely tons here. Uh, it's very campaign focused. Um, I think. You know, if you're big into the campaign, if you've already finished maybe one main campaign or something, you're looking for something a bit different, if you've replayed it several times, definitely grab the Bezwin Gambit. It's, it, there's so much here. It looks fantastic. It looks like great fun. I'm really looking forward to trying out Davith. Uh, and I'm curious to see someone utilising Mernrin, you know, to his full extent, because it looks like there's a lot of potential there. So, for skirmish players, um, so I don't play skirmish, I'm not entirely sure on those ones, so um, it looks like there's some quite a bit of stuff here for utilising with a skirmish, especially this new companion rule, if only just to find out what that's all about, so. But yeah, no, this is a fantastic new expansion for Imperial Assault, I think it's going to add, you know, breathe a bit more life into your s sessions if you play it a lot. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fantastic box set, I'm really happy with this expansion. So there we go, that is everything. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below in the comments. Uh, everything you've seen here today, all the individual components can be bought and sold on our website, bigorbitcards.co.uk. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.